Now, I know that both of you guys went down there as the big J journalists that you are doing doing some very objective general scouting of this year's draft class. But you also are as as two guys working for companies here in Nashville covering the Tennessee Titans. I know that you went down there with the Titans in the back of your mind. Um, big offseason, in case you weren't aware, a lot, a lot of moving parts of the Titans and a lot of needs. There had to be some guys that you saw down there that stuck out to you and you you kind of you put a tab on them. You highlighted them and said the Titans might should consider giving this guy a look. Who who were some guys that you had tabbed as potential Titans targets in the draft based on what you saw at the senior bowl this week? I'll let you go first. You let me are yeah. you sure? Yeah, I'm sure. Okay. Uh, I uh, well, right off the top of my head, watching the offensive line, the big meaty men slapping meat all week, I, I love it. There are some real attitude guys in this uh, draft class. I don't know that pick number 11 is here in Mobile this week. I think that's a fair assessment. Right. But I do think there's tremendous value in this year's offensive line class. And I'm going to name Big Steve Avila from the the uh, the Horn Frogs of I love Texas one. Christian. I love this one. He is a tank out there. He's big. He's round. He doesn't look like he should be moving the way that he does. He's I even, a tree trunk, man. I, I heard somebody he else is. compare him to Groot. That, that, that's yeah. the comp for him. <laughs> he's he, Groot. You know, you know who, he, speaking of tree trunks, and this is who he reminds me of, who? is uh, Chad Gable's uh, tag partner on Otis. WWE. Otis, yeah. yeah of, Otis. <laughs> yeah, of Alpha Academy. Yeah, yeah. right. So I, I – it, it, it amazed me how well he was moving in the drills out there. I even like nudge Zach at one point. I'm like, dude, they just pulled Steve Avila and like got him to the second level on a linebacker. If he gets his hands on this Unreal. man, it's, it's over. Put him in the dirt. Uh, he's a guy that if he gets his hands on you, uh, it's like a vice grip. You're not getting away from him. And I think he's going to be a mid round pick this year that could provide uh, some really good value for the Titans at the guard position. I got, uh, are we? Just going through well, all I of got, our guys. I got three. Gonna I'm going to give three. So you're going to give, go, give you, a couple. The people yeah, okay. want to know. Also talking about late round value adds. Linebacker Cam Jones out of Indiana okay. kept popping to me. I was I was trying to keep an eye on Dayan Henley, the the kid from Washington State. Really good linebacking prospect that shows a lot of range. He's he's a good, fluid, smooth mover and an athlete. But Cam Jones just kept showing up. I like his play recognition in the uh, in the drills. He seemed like he was always in command of what was going on. He's uh, a thumper. He closes on a play. I shouldn't even say closes on a play. He crashes on the play, uh, constantly in hey. pursuit of the ball. He's a, a heady guy. He's a has some pass rush potential there as well as evidenced by his uh, decleating of Evan Hole and the uh, the one on ones against the running backs. I like him as a smart, heady player that's going to come in and scrap and and be in the the linebacking rotation. That you're not going to have to give up a lot of draft. If, capital if you're not going to pay about like 15 million a year or whatever PFF has out for David Long, you could do a lot worse than uh, Cam Jones as his replacement. Absolutely, okay. I, I would say Tyler Steen from the offensive tackles as well. But I also really like this kid Matthew Bergeron out of Syracuse as well for the left tackle spot. I've been watching him a lot this week. Okay. He's good. Good technique guy. I, I'd like to see him, you know, be a little more powerful. I mean, he's got good size for the tackle position, but I think this is a draft where you can, even if you miss out on your, your Paris Johnson in the first round, you can still get a guy later in this draft to come in and compete for the the starting left tackle job. Yeah. So yeah, those would be agree. my three. Right, those so would be Matthew Bergeron out of Syracuse. That's a, that's a name I'm not sure a, a ton of folks have heard. Um, but but he's certainly he's right there on the consensus board, kind of a mid to late second round pick. Yeah. So he, he could be a guy that if the Titans don't don't go lineman, don't go tackle at 11, could be there for him. Yeah, I would like, you know, him and Jalen Duncan would be perfect, Ooh, would be uh, perfect number uh, second round draft picks right there. out of Maryland. Yeah. Yeah, I think I'm going to give you uh, I'm going to go with Jonathan Mingo. Um Obviously, the comparisons are going to be about AJ Brown because he's from yep. Ole Miss. But if you threw away the helmet, this is a TV put on guy. Him, I was talking to him yeah. about, about this earlier this week. Yeah, yeah. I and he was Mister Consistent. Like that, no wide receiver had good to great days every day of the week outside of Jonathan Mingo. Okay. And and I think that he has he shows some route savvy, some good technique. He he was going up against to me, the better corner groups of the two teams and the American team. The American team is kind of loaded, by the way. Uh, it is. Yeah, yeah. If they don't the win, way, 
for for how much senior bowl coverage I I how much I, I pay attention to it. I've never figured out how do they split the teams up. Uh, I'm not sure if there's a draft or anything. We don't even know why is it's it in Mobile. Just random? Is there no <laughs> rhyme or reason to it? Okay, so I, I'm, there, I'm sure no, there's no, no. like so there may be some kind of draft strategy okay, or something. You. But I I will say that um and it may be like different you know divisions Region throughout the United or, States right, or something, right. something. But I will say that the American team is loaded. If they don't win by two touchdowns, I'd be very surprised. However, the Jonathan Mingo's really stood out. He's physical. If you took away the helmet. He looks like A.J. Brown, and uh, it's funny because someone sure. had mentioned and tweeted that, oh, this is just A.J. Brown, and Stoney goes, look at this lazy f you know, <laughs> just, you know, just doing this uh, horrible analysis. And then he gets and, there, and he's like, uh. Yeah, well, yeah. it was Dave, it was yesterday after practice, he goes, he's going through his notes, and I mean, this is like all week of practice notes right here. Amazing. And he, he's going through his notes, and he goes, yep. Yeah, I think I'm going to have to apologize to that guy. <laughs> I will absolutely eat <laughs> on yeah. that take because uh, this is AJ Brown once over. Yeah, and that and right player. now he he you talk about movers up the board. He's projected to be at the fifth round when I checked this morning. Yeah, that ain't gonna that ain't gonna stay. That's that you're talking okay. about third to second round guy that's making waves. Uh, obviously, combine will help or hinder. Maybe he just gets stuck in that fourth area, that fourth round area. But he's great and. Uh, I'm looking at all the senior bowl wide receivers here, and he, I mean, on the consensus board, he's like the 15th one, but you're talking about him like one of the guys that stuck out most this week. Yeah, he did. I, and it's because he was just consistent. Like uh, guys like, you know, Andre Yushevis, you know, he he's out of Princeton. He had a great first day. We're talking about outside of Ty J Spears. He had the biggest media scrum around him on the field, and Brilliant. he disappeared for two days. Dontavian yeah. Wicks had a really great day one, really bad day two, but really great day three. And then like someone like Rashi Rice, who, you know, a lot of Titans fans really have fallen in love with, yes, was very average, I think is okay. the best yeah. way to describe him. A lot of good, a lot of bad, nothing spectacular that really wowed you and took your breath away. Whereas Mingo was just consistently good to great. I mean, like there was nobody as consistent as he was. And something else to factor in when we're talking about these wide receivers is the poor play of the quarterbacks. Oh, this They're is what I was going to ask. How did, you, how did you parse that this week? It's hard to evaluate so, a wide receiver if no one can throw him the ball. Well, that's why we took a lot of film, because then we could see how bad the ball thrown was or how much they <laughs> yeah, hesitated. Yeah. Because there were times where Mingo got wide open. Exactly what I was going to say. And, and, and nobody threw to him. Move on him, and he's just, yeah. Or it's like way overthrown, horrible ball. Yeah. Yeah. You needed a neon, even if they had a neon sign pointed to him that says, I'm coming open, that he's not getting the ball thrown his way. There were a lot of check downs by these quarterbacks. They were horrible. Um, Fair enough. Uh, and I'm going to say, I'm about to say Dylan Parm again. Uh, Payne Durham <laughs> I, tied exactly. in out of Purdue. I, I heard you I heard you parse this on one of your, your broadcasts this week that I was listening to. Yes. And I, I had been doing the same thing all week, referring to him as Dylan Parham. It's, it, I'm going to do it the whole time, too. I'm never going to The whole time. So yep. I'm just, you know, if I say Dylan Parham, Payne, people just got to know I'm Payne talking Durham, about Payne Durham. Payne yeah. Durham, yes. Payne Durham, tight end. He was easily the best tight end really? at the Senior Bowl. Easily. And, and let me say something. His stats better than back Musgrave, that up. Better than Musgrave. Better than Musgrave. Yeah, oh yeah. Well, Kincaid wasn't there. Uh, Kincaid wasn't there. So, oh, um, I see. He's listed as supposed to have been there. I guess. Well, he's injured. He's injured, oh, so I he gotcha. can't. Okay. He, um, but yeah, he's better than all of those guys, and um, he was clearly like Musgrave is closer to being number three than he is to be number one out of this wow. tight end group down here, and he did himself a lot of favors. And and I so will what say kind of tight that end is, he? is he more of a blocking type or is he the receiver? You're He's gonna, both at this point. You uh, I mean, put it out there. Yeah, he listen. What you've said, George, George Kittle esque. Okay. I will say. I will not oh, say that he's going to be George Kittle, but you're talking about a guy that finishes calm. blocks. Sure. He finishes blocks. He can. He gets yards after the catch. He gets open, and he has really good hands. I mean, he made contested catches like crazy. Uh, Stony has a clip on his um, on his uh, Twitter account mm -hmm. at Stony Keeley, so make sure to follow him. Um, that showing him making a contested catch with like two or three guys on his back. He jumps up in the air, grabs it, loses his helmet, and still comes down with the ball inside in NFL catch. Wow. And wow, wow, it wow. is insane. And I have pictures of him catching one, uh, con a contested catch down the, the field that's much further th than what they were doing in the end zone drills. And he just goes up and gets the ball. Um, 
you're talking about a guy that knows that blocking was probably his biggest knock, and he wanted to walk away from the Senior Bowl, making sure that every team knew by what he put on tape at the Senior Bowl at practices, oh, he can block, and he can. He can finish his blocks. He's tenacious. He is Fantastic. dirty and nasty. He is a guy that if you put, if you covered up their names and put his stats and his measurables next to George Kittle's senior year heading at the Combine, his looks better on every level. He has better stats, and he has better measurables than George Kittle. And I'm, I'm just, I'm not saying that he's going to be George Kittle, but I'm saying that if you're sitting there and you are talking about Rand Carthon, who's GM of the Tennessee Titans, who there drafted is. George Kittle, yep. who is responsible for the prospects in the later round, one of the guys down there, this is a guy that you're probably looking at and saying, okay, I pair him who can block this, uh, you know, pain with Chig, mm -hmm. and we got a pretty good tight end duo for years to come. I tell you, that's why too. you got to subscribe to stacking the inbox. .substack .com. Yep. This man is on some big brain. This week. Yeah, that, that is a, that is a very bright connection. And it sounds like he's the kind of guy that would fit the Titans culture quite well.